Uh, going to the arena to wrestle. <laughs> See, Slater, this is what happens. This is what happens. I don't even got on regular shoes either. They are up there behind barbed wire. That's a Doberman too. He gonna get on. <laughs> hey, he on us. Wait. <laughs> Guatemala, cultural hub of Central America and home of the 2021 Pan American Championships. Team USA is here, and this is kind of a really good opportunity to have basically a tune-up to get them ready for the Tokyo Olympics later this summer. It's a bird. It's right there. Ooh, shot glass. You said two, two for ten? Yeah, Gable Stevenson, who's got three age-level world championships at the cadet and junior level. And he's 20 years old and he's on the Olympic team. I think he's got a really good shot of winning the Olympics. There's gonna be guys that are gonna be testful. Do I expect myself to go out there and win the championship? Yes, I do. Follow along as we watch Gable and the rest of Team USA pursue gold in Guatemala. First day, uh, we just landed. We landed a few hours ago. Had a little process to get checked in, but we're in. Everybody's checked in, got into their rooms. This is the training uh, room that's inside the hotel. One thing that's really cool about being here is like you're seeing all these top level guys training together, right? I mean, you got world champions and Jamie Taylor back on the map rolling around. You got Kyle Snyder, world and Olympic champion, rolling with Gable Stevenson, who's a three time age group world champions on his first Olympic team. Seeing these guys roll together is like uh, an awesome and unique experience. So, Guatemala, here we are. Everything's dress rehearsal until the main event, right? Like, everything's dress rehearsal until the Olympic trials. Everything's dress rehearsal until the Olympic Games. You're always making small adjustments and refinements, and you want to test, you want to challenge, and you want to see how you do. a and Championships, first one ever for me. Just had practice. David and I rolled around for probably 35, 40 minutes. We help each other out a lot in a lot of different areas. Yeah. Um, so like as he gets better, he'll like, you know, one day he'll be in a position, and then the next day I'll figure it out. And then it's just like kind of compound on top of one another. I feel like uh, most definitely is the best version of me, just from the trials to now, um, cleaning some things up. Having Kyle, Kyle's done it at my age, I think that's like the most important step because he's, he's told me I can I can do the same thing and he wants me to, to be the best version. And so I think um, having those guys in my corner and having the team that we have, I think it's the best team that, that may have came about. And so it's a lot of accolated guys on the team and we'll see how it goes and at the end of July. <clears throat> Is it this one? I don't see anybody on there. Oh, this one. <laughs> We're about to hop in the wrong van. After a full day of practice, it's time for some R&R. &R. Gable and the team decide to travel to the nearby city of Antigua, hoping to catch a glimpse of local Guatemalan life and maybe even a volcano. I was up there. I was up there asleep. I had to. It's a bird. It's right there. You want to catch it? Do I want my finger bit off? Oh, come on, man. Oh, you, you must want your finger better. Oh, We're out here in Antigua getting a tourist from my guy Hugo up here. Um, nice little spot. I think that's an active, active volcano over there. And Gable and I and the rest of my NJRTC and a couple other guys, we're calling ourselves the Adventure Crew. We climbed up the volcano on horseback. Gable actually had the smallest horse. <laughs> so I feel bad for the horse, but that horse made it through. 25? Come 25, on, 20. 35? Oh my it's 20 god. 20 each one. I'll give you 35. Because it's because Mara Spencer is American. Fuck, we're here in Guatemala. Look. Okay, 20 for both. <laughs> Gable's haggling skills are the worst. He spent all day while we were in Antigua trying to find $1 less. He, he has a hard time saying no. For you, it's 20 for both. 20. 20. I'll tell you all this the places wrestling will take you are crazy. I would never think I would end up in a place like Tokyo and Guatemala. It's a nice place. It's cool. The weather's nice. The vibes are cool. I mean, I'm enjoying my time. Ten dollars. Now ten. But it was twenty. <laughs> I'll think about it. I don't know yet. I would like one, but man, I don't know. 
Uh, I feel like people are trying to get their quick dollar, you know? It's, it's all about hustle in this world. They hustling. Okay, it's still hustling. Still hustling. How much? I'll give you for you some price, 30 for two. See, she said two for 10. See, everybody's coming with a better variety of necklaces, so I'm waiting for the last person. I'm waiting for the, ooh, shot glass. Cheap? Okay, I'm cheap. God damn it. I'm cheap. Cheap as hell. When did you guys move to, to Minnesota and why? I moved to Minnesota when I was about 12 years old, turning 13. Um, we moved there practically just because wrestling was, was, we needed something different. Well, my mom always says I was born on the mat. I've been on the mat since I was young. Um, my older brothers wrestled, so just me being on the wrestling mat was just a thing for us. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Oh, wow! Just a force of nature, Gable Stevens. Only a sophomore in high school, but he certainly doesn't wrestle like the one. The best and a big guy. Cadet level that I've ever seen. I think the move to Apple Valley, Minnesota kind of changed our, our whole lives and changed, changed my perspective on wrestling. I started eighth grade at 195 and I wound up taking a second at state, and that kind of like was like, oh, who was this gay? Well, Steve's the kid, he's new on the scene. At that point, he was kind of just this pudgy little kid, you know, like, but you watch him, and you're like, man, this guy moves, he's different, he's unique. You know, his agility, his movement on his feet. Uh, his strength, and there's there's really no weakness in his game, so he kind of has it all. He's probably one of the smoothest guys you can go with, and in, in not just like our room, but you know anywhere. He just he feels things so well. He's got an incredible feel, and he's always been like that. You know, he's a lightweight in a very big frame. Guys that can reattack like that with that kind of speed and have so many different directions that he can go off of that. He's been in those positions his whole life. He's a master. Being number one junior high wrestler, then going into high school and being number one country right away. It took me from a Oh, I just wrestle into a person that like he can be a star in this realm and, and be big time. He just was like a sponge. He absorbed everything, and the way he picked things up was it was incredible. I think the era that I came through, especially me, made high school wrestling like different. After the state championship my senior year, I went out there and the coach came up to me. He was like, "You should do a backflip." So I went out there. I pinned him like just hit him with a whip over, and simple. And I pinned him like 17 seconds, and I flipped and. That started the, the flipping era. Like standing ovation, they went crazy. Cause back no one no one that big a size should be flipping. And it was like a surprise for them. So it was cool. I think he's always been an entertainer and like to uh, win the crowd over. I think it's increased as he's gotten environments with bigger crowds and, and higher pressure, higher stakes situations. People wanted to be different and I think a lot of things changed when I got when I went through high school because a lot of people it was a wave that started and people just followed it and people wanted to be a star in wrestling and not just a regular wrestler. Blue and ten. I want that one. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Here, here. No, 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 no. Don't, don't play with me. Okay. <laughs> Hours later. <laughs> Let's go. It's competition day. While some competitors are content to ride the bus to the venue, other, more adventurous wrestlers, decide to walk. Slater, you, we're supposed to keep going straight. Oh, okay. This look like where the NJRTC be at. Hold on now. See, Slater, this is what happens. I don't even got on regular shoes either. Up there behind barbed wire, bro. See, he's trying to get down. <laughs> hey, he on us. <laughs> oh, you saw him trying to sneak through? Oh, oh. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it crazy that we walked the snowman here better, faster than bus? They just got here. Hey, I, if I'm on this court, I'm getting at least 60 points. You made that bit? That's 100. You want to keep going? That's 100. That's 100. You made it? Shoot again, bro. He didn't give you change. They must play different here. I'm not shooting that bit. I'm finna miss on camera. Let's 
kind of soften them up a little bit. We are here at the, the venue for the 2021 Pan American Championships in Guatemala City. Uh, Team USA is ready to get the day started. I think the expectation is uh, eight gold medals. You guys are excited, ready to roll. I think we're looking for some, uh, some dominance. This tournament actually qualifies us to go to the World Championship, which is still happening this year. So I'm racking up a few points to hopefully be seated one or two headed into that World Championship. We were expecting some, some additional competition that wasn't here, and so we just encourage guys to do the things that they've been training to do. It hurts that Cuba's not here. Bill Zadek was really hoping the Cubans were here because it would, you know, give the, those Olympians that good test. You know, as long as you're doing you and you're not dropping your level, you know, as long as you keep your intensity up, you know, it is what it is, and we're still getting reps and still, still going through the process of, of stepping on the mat. These young guys, right? I mean, they make a jump. They're really good athletes, right? And. And they have good skills and they made the age group world teams, they've won age group medals. There's some confidence that comes with that physical maturity, like, hey, I can hang with these guys, right? And once they start to understand that for themselves, man, they just, that growth curve is like super quick, right? Okay, well, everyone's excited. Everyone wants to know where you're going. You're a game-changing recruit. Um, why don't you make it official? Where are you going to be wrestling in college? Um, I'll be attending uh, coaches Brandon Egham and Luke Becker at the University of Minnesota. I just want to come straight into the lineup, make an impact on the lineup. My college decision was really easy just because Minnesota was home for like a long time. I've come in the wrestling room since eighth grade. They treated me like, like a star, and they treated me perfect. I want to stay home and, and create a legacy at home and, and be a Minnesota legend like some of the other guys are. We had his brother, Bobby came. We thought it was kind of a package deal. And knowing the Stevensons, they're a very close family, very tight knit. And so that was a big thing, having Bobby in the program and being, being uh, you know, in our system. When I first put my red service against Derek White, Oklahoma State, he was, I think, number two in the country at the time. Big dude, obviously, he knew how to move. I think that was a perfect match to me to showcase why I should put my red shirt. Even though we were losing, people were so excited that Minnesota had another spark. And, and I, was, I was happy to be that next spark in the lineup, and I was happy that Egan was, was, we talked about it. And you should pull it and go out, even if we're losing a duel, still go out. A guy like Gable, he was ready and he wanted to wrestle, so you're not going to hold him back. Rather than sit in the room and train, he didn't need that, that time to just train and go to opens. He, he needed to be out there and he needed to wrestle Kazar and these guys and, and figure some things out, which he did. And ultimately, that made him a better wrestler. Everybody wants to go to college and do what Kale did. He went 159 and 0, four national titles. Did I think I was going to do it? Of course. After like how the season was going, I thought I was going to pull it off and not lose a match freshman year. Goes under. Gets the underhooks in. Kassar circles to his left with five ticks left to go. The Gopher has one chance to go. Dives at the legs. Kassar spins around. And with time expiring, that will do it. Probably the biggest blessing that I've had wrestling-wise was losing that freshman year. That's when I just had to re-focus re and reevaluate. Like, I'm not the best guy. People expect to be a four-time. Now you might. Now it's a joke to some people. Like, oh, he, he didn't win. He's he's not that good. He's not ready for college. I think that that's made him the wrestler he is today. Taking some of those losses and using those to his advantage. And that, obviously, some pressure is is kind of released from him. And not having to answer all the questions about being undefeated four time or this or that. I switched up everything and made sure that no one could touch me. No one could beat me. Comparing 2019 Gable to 2021 Gable, it's, you just see pictures and it's like, wow. 2019 Gable was really good. He took the weight room very seriously. If you were going to step on a mat with me, you, you feared me before you come out. He's got the quickness, he's got the technique, he's got so much going for him, but he added all that, that strength and that size and he didn't lose any, any of his quickness. He still moves like he always, ha always has. This year, Things changed, everything changed. I had to assert my dominance. I don't think any college wrestler wants to go out there and wrestle seven minutes with me. If you lose bad enough, you can put on floor wrestling on a highlight. If you keep it close, which you won't, you might think you got it, then the next match you don't. My, I think my, my goal this year was to, to push myself as hard as I can outside the room, 
So when I stepped out on the mat, no one could keep up for seven minutes. At the end of the day, I wanted the national title. I went out there and won my match, did it, did it in a good way, felt good about it, and the second part of the flip came. República Dominicana, Luis Miguel Pérez Sosa. All right, Team USA is rolling, absolutely rolling to this point. Um, won every single match they've wrestled. Gable Stevenson uh, won three matches. There's four guys in his pool. He wrestled the other three, smashed them all quickly. I think the last one did go over a minute. I think one of them was like 16 seconds, 18 seconds. I can't confirm this, but I, I know they were kind of joking about it prior to the tournament. I think Gable and Dave might be in a contest to see who can spend the least amount of time on the mat. First went to a WWE match, end of senior year after high school when I did the backflip. I met Paul Heyman, I saw Brock Lesnar for the first time. Next year, my freshman year, Lesnar came into the room, we took the picture, it went viral. And I talked to him and I was like, hey, how do I, I wanna do WWE, and like, you know that I wanna do WWE. And he looked at me, he was like, win the national tournament first. This is the year that really changed everything. I went to WrestleMania like a couple months ago, and that's when like, I looked at it all and I was like, that's what I want to do. Just the people I met, how it was, the fans, even though it was 25% capacity in the Buccaneer Stadium, it was like, people loved it. And people were, I would walk across this, walk across and get stuff and people would chant my name too. And I was like, y'all already know who I am? I have no clue. And I think that's when I turned from a college wrestler to like a, a, a different figure. Nothing that he does really surprises me. You know, I. I've been around him enough and, and seen him. I know what he's capable of and he's an entertainer and you know he thrives in those those environments, those, those scenarios. And when he's out there and the camera's on him and the pressure's on, I think he does his best. But WWE is like the next step. It's where it's like the NFL for college football players, it's like where we wanna go to to be a star, to be to maybe go into movies and be like the rock. I went from this regular Gable wrestler on Team USA to oh, Gable's the next big star maybe. And with some promotions, Gable's like it was different. Everything changed really quick. Let's go, Big G. Right away, on your feet. There you go, keep my balance. There it is, right. beautiful. As the Pan Am Championships come to a close, the United States earns an impressive 29 total medals, including 24 gold. Gable Stevenson wins his first senior level international event. Could this be a preview of Tokyo and success to come? Right now I'm not thinking about Tokyo. A lot of people bring it up. A lot of people ask how does it feel to be Olympian. I give them the straight answer, like it's it's crazy, it's surreal that I represent Team USA and I'm the one on one at the weight class. I'm wired in on this first thing. I'll be wired in on tomorrow, the next day. Well, obviously we're developing, trying to develop them as as men and look beyond just their college career, just this season and kind of what's next and been impressed with the way he's been he's been trained and focused in on this. It's crazy the, the doors that have opened just from being, being Gable and winning. I never thought I would, I would touch a spot where the opportunities have been so big that I could leave one place and go to the other and be fine. Would I like one more year in the Minnesota singlet? Yes. It would be cool to come back one more time and, and see how things go. But if, it, if that doesn't work out, I'll take my next step in life and, and do, do what I need to do. Things are gonna happen and it's gonna be crazy when they happen. And I, I mean, hopefully I could be like the next rocker the next Lesnar, the next big thing, or Olympic champ. He had an extra match, I said he still beat me. Close. Beast.